The Tibetan Book of the Dead. Page 52. The Dawning of the Wrathful Deities. From the 8th to the 14th day. Introduction. Now the manner of the dawning of the wrathful deities is to be shown. In the above bardo of the peaceful deities, there were seven stages of ambuscade. The setting face to face at each stage should have caused the deceased to recognize either at one or another stage and to have been liberated. Multitudes will be liberated by that recognition. And although multitudes obtain liberation in that manner, the number of sentient beings being great, evil, karma, powerful obscurations, dense propensities of too long standing, the wheel of ignorance and illusion becomes neither exhausted nor accelerated. Although all be set face to face in such detail, there is a vast preponderance of those who wander downwards, unliberated. Therefore, after the cessation of the dawning of the peaceful and the knowledge holding deities, who come to welcome one, the 58 flame and hallowed, wrathful, blood-drinking deities come to dawn, who are only the former peaceful deities in changed aspect, according to the place or psychic center of the bardo body of the deceased, whence they proceed. Nevertheless, they will not resemble them. This is the bardo of the wrathful deities, and they, being influenced by fear, terror, and awe. Footnote 41. Fear, terror, and awe will only be felt by the ordinary deceased devotee. Those adept in yoga know that the bardo is an illusion so they can expect rebirth or even nirvana. Recognition becomes more difficult. The intellect gaining not in independence, passing from one fainting state to a round of fainting states. Yet, if one but recognize a little, it is easier to be liberated at the stage. If it be asked why, the answer is because of the dawning of the radiances, which produce fear, terror and all. The intellect is undistractedly alert in one pointedness. That is why. If at the stage one do not meet with this kind of teaching, one's hearing of religious lore, although it be like an ocean in its vastness, is of no avail. There are even discipline holding abbots or bhikkhus and doctors in metaphysical discourses who err at this stage and not recognizing, wander into the samsara. As for the common worldly folk, what need is there to mention them? By fleeing through fear, terror and awe, they fall over the precipices into the unhappy worlds and suffer, but the least of the least of the devotees of the mystic Mantrayana doctrines. As soon as he sees these blood drinking deities, will recognize them to be his tutelary deities. 
and the meeting will be like that of human acquaintances. He will trust them and becoming merged into them in at one moment will obtain Buddhahood. Footnote 42. The blood represents samsaric existence. If the devotee realizes that these deities are the karmic personifications of his own disposition, the true nature of samsaric existence will dawn and Buddhahood will follow. By having meditated on the description of these blood-drinking deities while in the human world, and by having performed some worship or praise of them, or at least by having seen their painted likeness and their images upon witnessing the dawning of the deities at the stage, recognition of them will result and liberation. In this light, the art, again, at the death of those discipline holding abbots and doctors in metaphysical discourses who remain uninstructed in these bardo teachings, however, assiduously they may have devoted themselves to religious practices and however clever they may have been in expounding doctrines while in the human world, there will not come any phenomenal signs such as rainbow halo at the funeral pyre, nor bone relics from the ashes. This is because when they live the mystic or esoteric doctrines, were never held within their heart and because they had spoken contemptuously of them and because they were never acquainted through initiation with the deities of the mystic or esoteric doctrines thus when these dawn in the bardo they do not recognize them suddenly seeing what they had never seen before they view it as inimical and an antagonistic feeling being engendered, they pass into the miserable states because of that. Therefore, if the observers of the disciplines and the metaphysicians have not in them the practices of the mystic or esoteric doctrines such signs as the rainbow halo come not nor are bone relics and seed-like bones ever produced from the bones of their funeral pyre these are the reasons for it the least of the least of mantrayanic devotees who may seem to be of very unrefined manners, unindustrious, untactful, and who may not live in accordance with his vows, and who in every way may be inelegant in his habits, and even unable perhaps to carry the practices of his teachings to a successful issue. Let no one feel disrespect for nor doubt him, but pay reverence to the esoteric or mystic doctrines which he holdeth. By that alone one obtaineth liberation at this stage. Page 55 even though the deeds of one paying such reverence may not have been very elegant while in the human world, at his death there will come at least one kind of sign, such as rainbow radiance, bone images, and bone reliques. This is because 
the esoteric or mystic doctrines possess great gift waves. Those of and above the mystic mantrayanic devotees of ordinary psychic development who have meditated upon the visualization and perfection processes and practiced the essence or essence mantras need not wander down this far on the Chunyad Bardo. As soon as they cease to breathe, they will be led into the pure paradise realms by the heroes and heroines and the knowledge holders. As a sign of this, the sky will be cloudless. They will merge into rainbow radiance. There will be sun showers, sweet scent of incense in the air, music in the skies, radiance, bone reliques and images from their funeral pyre. Therefore, to the abbots or discipline holders, to the doctors and to those mystics who have failed in their vows, and to all the common people, this turtle is indispensable. But those who have meditated upon the great perfection and the great symbol, footnote 43, the great perfection refers to the fundamental doctrine concerning the gaining of Buddhahood taught by the school of Guru Padma Sambhava. The great symbol refers to an ancient Indian system of yoga. We'll recognize the clear light at the moment of death and obtaining the Dharmakaya. All of them will be such as not to need the reading of this third all. By recognizing the clear light at the moment of death, they also will recognize the visions of the peaceful and wrathful during the Chunyad Bardo and obtain the Sambhogakaya or recognizing during the Sitpa Bardo obtain the Nirmana Kaya and taking birth on the higher planes will in the next rebirth meet with this doctrine and then enjoy the continuity of karma. Therefore, this third all is the doctrine by which Buddhahood may be attained without meditation. The doctrine liberating by the hearing of it alone. The doctrine which leadeth brings of great evil karma on the secret path. The doctrine which produceth differentiation instantaneously between those who are initiated into it and those who are not. Being the profound doctrine which confers perfect enlightenment instantaneously. Those sentient beings who have been reached by it cannot go to the unhappy states. The doctrine and the Tadol doctrine, footnote 44, a small Tibetan work consisting entirely of mantras, used as an accompaniment of the bardo turtle. When joined together, being like unto a mandala of gold inset with turquoise, combine them. Thus, the indispensable nature of the turtle being shown, there now cometh the setting face to face with the dawning of the wrathful deities in the bardo. The eighth day. Again, calling the deceased by name, address him thus. 
O nobly born, listen undistractedly, not having been able to recognize when the peaceful deities shone upon thee in the bardo above, thou hast come wandering thus far. Now on the eighth day the blood-drinking wrathful deities will come to shine. Act so as to recognize them without being distracted. O nobly born, the great glorious Buddha Heruka, dark brown of color, with three heads, six hands, and four feet firmly postured, the right face being white, the left red, the central dark brown, the body emitting flames of radiance, the nine eyes widely open, in terrifying gaze, the eyebrows quivering like lightning, the protruding teeth glistening and set over one another, giving vent to sonorous utterances of alala and ha ha and piercing whistling sounds the hair of a reddish yellow color standing on end and emitting radiance the heads adorned with dried human skulls and the symbols of the sun and moon black serpents and raw human heads forming a garland for the body the first of the right hands holding a wheel the middle one a sword the last one a battle axe the first of the left hands a bell the middle one a skull bow the last one a plow share his body embraced by the mother buddha Kroti Shaurima, her right hand clinging to his neck and her left putting to his mouth a red shell filled with blood, making a palatal sound like a crackling and a clashing sound and a rumbling sound as loud as thunder emanating from the two deities radiant flames of wisdom blazing from every hair pore of the body and each containing a flaming dorche the two deities together thus standing with one leg bent and the other straight and tense on a dais supported by horned eagles Footnote 45 The Garudas, which in Indian and Tibetan mythology personify energy and aspiration, will come forth from within thine own brain and shine vividly upon thee. Fear that not. Be not awed. Know it to be the embodiment of thine own intellect. As it is thine own tutelary deity, be not terrified, be not afraid, for in reality it is the Bhagavan Vairochana, the father-mother. Simultaneously, with the recognition, liberation will be obtained. If they be recognized, merging thyself in at one moment into the tutelary deity, Buddhahood in the Samboga Kaya will be one. Page 57. The Ninth Day. But if one flee from them through awe and terror being begotten, then on the ninth day, the blood-drinking deities of the Vajra order will come to receive one. Thereupon, the setting face to face is 
calling the deceased by name, thus, O nobly born, listen undistractedly. He of the blood-drinking Vajra order, named the Bhagavan Vajra Heruka, dark blue in color, with three faces, six hands and four feet firmly postured, in the first right hand holding the Dorje, in the middle one the skull ball, in the last one the battle axe, in the first of the left a bell, in the middle one a skull ball, in the last one a plowshare, his body embraced by the mother Vajra Kroti Shaurima, her right hand clinging to his neck, her left offering to his mouth, a red shell filled with blood, will issue from the eastern quarter of thy brain and come to shine upon thee. Fear it not, be not terrified, be not awed, know it to be the embodiment of thine own intellect. As it is thine own tutelary deity, be not terrified. In reality, they are the Bhagavan Vajra Sattva, the father and mother. Believe in them. Recognizing them, liberation will be obtained at once. By so proclaiming them, knowing them to be tutelary deities, merging in them, in at one moment, Buddhahood will be obtained. The tenth day. Yet, if one do not recognize them, the obscurations of evil deeds being too great and flee from them through terror and awe, then on the tenth day, the blood-drinking deities of the precious gem order will come to receive one. Thereupon, the setting face to face is calling the deceased by name thus. O nobly born, listen. On the tenth day, the blood-drinking deity of the precious gem order named Ratna Heruka yellow of color, having three faces, six hands, four feet, firmly postured, the right face white, the left red, the central darkish yellow, and hollowed in flames, in the first of the six hands holding a gem, in the middle one, a trident staff, in the last one a baton, in the first of the left hands a bell, in the middle one a skull bow, in the last one a trident staff. His body embraced by the mother, Ratna Kroti Shaurima, her right hand clinging to his neck, her left offering to his mouth a red shell filled with blood, will issue from the southern quarter of thy brain and come to shine upon thee. Fear not, be not terrified, be not awed. Know them to be the embodiment of thine own intellect. They being thine own tutelary deity, be not terrified. In reality, they are the father, mother, Bhagavan, Ratna, Sambhava. Belief in them, recognition of them, and the obtaining of liberation will be simultaneous. By so proclaiming them, knowing them to be tutelary deities, merging in them, in at one moment. Buddhahood will be obtained. The eleventh day. Yet, though set face to face thus, if 
through power of evil propensities, terror, and all being produced, not recognizing them to be tutelary deities. One flee from them. Then, on the eleventh day, the blood-drinking lotus order will come to receive one. Thereupon, the setting face to face is, calling the deceased by name thus, O nobly born, on the eleventh day, the blood-drinking deity of the lotus order, called the Bhagavan Padma Heruka, of reddish black color, having three faces, six hands and four feet, firmly postured, the right face white, the left blue, the central darkish red, in the first of the right of the six hands holding a lotus, in the middle one a trident staff, in the last a club, in the first of the left hands a bell, in the middle one a skull bow filled with blood. Footnote 46 The Lamaic rituals, a fluid red pigment, is used to represent blood, which symbolizes the renunciation of life or of sansaric existence. In the last hand, a small drum, his body embraced by the mother Padma Groti Shaurima, her right hand clinging to his neck, her left offering to his mouth a red shell full of blood. The father and mother in union will issue from the western quarter of thy brain and come to shine upon thee. Fear that not, be not terrified, be not awed, rejoice. Recognize them to be the product of thine own intellect, as they are thine own tutelary deity. Be not afraid. In reality, they are the father-mother, Bhagavan Amitabha. Believe in them concomitantly with recognition, liberation will come. Through such acknowledging, recognizing them to be tutelary deities, in at one moment thou wilt merge into them and obtain Buddhahood. Page 59, the twelfth day. Despite such setting face to face, being still led backwards by evil propensities, terror and awe arising, it may be that one recognize not and flee. Thereupon, on the twelfth day, the blood-drinking deities of the karmic order, accompanied by the Kerima, Tamenma and Wang Chugma. Footnote 47 these three orders of deities originate in India and Tibet. The Kerima has human shape and the Tamenma and Wangchukma have human-like bodies and animal heads. Each deity symbolizes a particular karmic impulse and appears as a hallucination in the bardo consciousness of the deceased will come to receive one. Not recognizing, terror may be produced. Thereupon, the setting face to face is calling the deceased by name, thus. O nobly born, on the twelfth day, the blood-drinking deity of the karmic order, named Karma Heruka, dark green of color, having three faces, six hands and four feet firmly postured, the right face white, the left red, the middle dark green, 
majestic of appearance, in the first of the right of the six hands, holding a sword, in the middle one a trident stuff, in the last a club, in the first of the left hands a bell, in the middle one a skull ball, in the last a plowshare. His body embraced by the mother Karma Krotishaurima, her right hand clinging to his neck, the left offering to his mouth, a red shell, the father and mother in union, issuing from the northern quarter of thy brain, will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. Be not terrified, be not awed, recognize them to be the embodiment of thine own intellect. They being thine own tutelary deity, be not afraid. In reality, they are the Father Mother, Bhagavan Amoga Siddhi. Believe and be humble and be fond of them. Concomitantly, with recognition, liberation will come. Through such acknowledging, recognizing them to be tutelary deities, in at one moment, thou wilt merge into them and obtain Buddhahood. Through the Guru's select teaching, one cometh to recognize them to be the thought forms issuing from one's own intellectual faculties. For instance, a person upon recognizing a lion skin to be a lion skin is freed from fear. For though it be only a stuffed lion skin, if one do not know it to be so actually, fear arises. But upon being told by some person that it is a lion skin only, one is freed from fear. Similarly, here, too, when the bands of blood-drinking deities, huge of proportions, with very thick set limbs, dawn as big as the skies, Awe and terror are naturally produced in one. But as soon as the setting face to face is heard, one recognizes them to be one's own tutelary deities and one's own thought forms. Then, when upon the mother clear light, which one had been accustomed to formerly, a secondary clear light, the offspring clear light is produced, and the mother and offspring clear light coming together like two intimate acquaintances blend inseparably, and there from a self emancipating radiance dawned upon one through self enlightenment and self knowledge, one is liberated. Page 60. The thirteenth day. If the setting face to face be not obtained, good persons on the path too fall back from here and wander into the samsara. Then the eight wrathful ones, the kerimas and the tamenmas, having various animal heads, issue from within one's own brain and come to shine upon oneself. Thereupon, the setting face to face is calling the deceased by name, thus, O nobly born, listen undistractedly. On the thirteenth day, from the eastern quarter of thy brain, the eight kerimas will emanate and come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. From the east of thy brain, the white kerima. Footnote 48. An Indian cemetery goddess. 
holding a human corpse as a club in the right hand, in the left holding a skull bowl filled with blood, will come to shine upon thee. Fear not. From the south, the yellow Tsirima. Footnote 49, an Indian cemetery goddess holding a bow and an arrow ready to shoot from the west the red pramoha holding a makara banner footnote 50 water lion or leviathan a mythological monster from the north the black petali holding a dorche and a blood-filled skull bow from the southeast the red Pukase holding intestines in the right hand and with the left putting them to her mouth. From the southwest, the dark green Gashmari, the left hand holding a blood filled skull ball, with the right stirring it with a dorche and she then drinking it with majestic relish. From the northwest, the yellowish white. Sandali, footnote 51. The spirit of a female locust who hunts cemeteries intended as a symbol to demonstrate the nature of samsaric existence and the need to transcend it. Tearing asunder a head from a corpse, the right hand holding a heart, the left putting the corpse to the mouse, and she then eating thereof from the northeast, the dark blue smasha, tearing asunder a head from a corpse and eating thereof. These, the eight kerimas of the abodes or eight directions, also come to shine upon thee, surrounding the five blood drinking fathers. Yet be not afraid. O nobly born, from the circle outside of them, the eight damenmas of the eight regions of the brain will come to shine upon thee. From the east, the dark brown line headed one, the hands crossed on the breast, and in the mouth holding a corpse and shaking the mane. From the south, the red tiger-headed one, the hands crossed downwards, grinning and showing the fangs and looking on with protruding eyes. From the west, the black fox-headed one, the right hand holding a shaving knife, the left holding an intestine, and she eating and licking the blood therefrom. From the north, the dark blue wolf-headed one, the two hands tearing upon a corpse and looking on with protruding eyes. From the southeast, a yellowish white vulture headed one, bearing a gigantic human shaped corpse on the shoulder and holding a skeleton in the hand. From the southwest, dark red cemetery bird headed one carrying a gigantic corpse on the shoulder from the northwest the black crow headed one the left hand holding a skull bow the right holding a sword and she eating heart and lungs from the northeast the dark blue owl headed one holding a dorche in the right hand and holding a sword in the left and eating. These eight tamenmas of the eight regions, likewise surrounding the blood drinking fathers and issuing from within the brain, come to shine upon thee. Fear that not, know them to be the thought forms of thine own intellectual faculties. Page 62, the 14th day. O nobly born, 
on the 14th day, the four female doorkeepers, also issuing from within thine own brain, will come to shine upon thee. Again recognize from the east quarter of thy brain will come to shine the white tiger-headed goat-holding goddess bearing a blood-filled skull ball in her left hand from the south, the yellow soul-headed noose-holding goddess from the west, the red lion-headed iron chain-holding goddess and from the north, the green serpent-headed bell-holding goddess. Thus issue the four female doorkeepers also from within thine own brain and come to shine upon thee as tutelary deities recognize them. O nobly born, on the outer circle of these thirty wrathful deities, Herukas, the twenty-eight various-headed mighty goddesses bearing various weapons, issuing from within thine own brain, will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. Recognize whatever shineth to be the thought forms of thine own intellectual faculties. At this vitally important time, recollect the select teachings of the Guru. O nobly born, there will Dawn from the east, the dark brown yak headed Rakshasa goddess holding the Dorje and a skull, and the reddish yellow serpent headed Brahma goddess holding a lotus in her hand, and the greenish black leopard headed great goddess holding a trident in her hand and the blue monkey-headed goddess of inquisitiveness holding a wheel, and the red snow bear headed virgin goddess bearing a short spear in the hand, and the white bear headed Indra goddess holding an intestine noose in the hand. These, the six yoginis of the east, issuing from within the eastern quarter of thine own brain will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. O nobly born, from the south will dawn the yellow bat-headed delight goddess holding a shaving knife in the hand and the red makara-headed peaceful goddess holding an urn in the hand and the red scorpion-headed Amrita goddess holding a lotus in the hand and the white kite-headed moon goddess holding a dorje in the hand and the dark green fox-headed baton goddess flourishing a club in the hand and the yellowish black tiger-headed Rakshasi holding a blood-filled skull ball in the hand. These, the six yoginis of the south, issuing from within the southern quarter of thine own brain, will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. O nobly born, from the west, will dawn the greenish, black, vulture-headed eater goddess, holding a baton in the hand, and the red horse-headed delight goddess, holding a huge trunk of a corpse, and the white eagle-headed mighty goddess, holding a club in the hand, and the yellow dog-headed rakshasi, holding a dorje in the hand, and a shaving knife and cutting with this, and the red hoopoo-headed desire goddess holding a bow and arrow in the hand aimed, and the green stag-headed wells guardian goddess holding an urn in the hand. 
these the six yoginis of the West issuing from within the Western quarter of thine own brain will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. O nobly born, from the north will dawn the blue wolf-headed wind goddess waving a pennant in the hand and the red ibex-headed woman goddess holding a pointed stake in the hand and the black so headed so goddess holding a noose of fangs in the hand and the red crow headed thunderball goddess holding an infant corpse in the hand and the greenish black elephant headed big nosed goddess holding in the hand a big corpse and drinking blood from a skull and the Externally, sorry, wrong page. Blue serpent headed water goddess holding in the hand a serpent noose. These, the six yoginis of the Norse, issuing from within the northern quarters of thine own brain, will come to shine upon thee. Fear that not. O nobly born, the four yoginis of the door issuing from within the brain will come to shine upon thee. From the east, the black cuckoo-headed mystic goddess holding an iron hook in the hand. From the south, the yellow goat-headed mystic goddess holding a noose in the hand. From the west, the red lion-headed mystic goddess holding an iron chain in the hand, and from the north, the greenish-black serpent-headed mystic goddess, these, the four door-keeping yoginis issuing from within the brain, will come to shine upon thee. Since these twenty-eight might goddesses emanate from the bodily powers of Ratna Sambhava, he of the six Heruka deities recognized them. O nobly born, the peaceful deities emanate from the voidness of the Dharmakaya, recognize them. From the radiance of the Dharmakaya, emanate the wrathful deities, recognize them. Footnote 52, 53. Emanations from the void or innate, unshaped aspects of the Dharmakaya state, viewing man as the microcosm of the macrocosm. Footnote 53. Emanations from the active, radiant aspect of the Dharmakaya state, man as the microcosm of the macrocosm being inseparable. Page 64. At this time, when the 58 blood-drinking deities emanating from thine own brain come to shine upon thee, if thou knowest them to be the radiances of thine own intellect, thou wilt merge in the state of at one into the body of the blood-drinking ones there and then and obtain Buddhahood. O nobly born, by not recognizing now and by fleeing from the deities out of fear, again sufferings will come to overpower thee. If this be not known, fear being begotten of the blood-drinking deities, one is awed and terrified and fainteth away. One's own thought forms turn into illusory appearances and one wanders into the samsara. If one be not awed and terrified, one will not wander into the samsara. Furthermore, the bodies of the largest of the peaceful and wrathful deities are equal in vastness to the limits of the heavens and intermediate as big as Mount Meru. Footnote 54 
Mount Meru is the central mystical mountain of Buddha cosmography. The smallest equal to 18 bodies, such as thine own body, set one upon another. Be not terrified at that. Be not awed. If all existing phenomena shining forth as divine shapes and radiances be recognized to be the emanations of one's own intellect, Buddhahood will be obtained at that very instant of recognition. The saying Buddhahood will be obtained in a moment of time is that which applieth now. Bearing this in mind, one will obtain Buddhahood by merging in at one moment into the radiances and the kayas. O nobly born, whatever fearful and terrifying visions thou mayst see, recognize them to be thine own thought forms. O nobly born, if thou recognize not and be frightened, then all the peaceful deities will shine forth in the shape of Mahakala. Footnote 55. At this stage, all unreal forms of the peaceful deities merge and appear as this one deity. And all the wrathful deities will shine forth in the form of Dharma Raja, the Lord of Death. Footnote 56. This illusory deity assumes many forms which can blend into a single form. And thine own thought forms becoming illusions or maras. Thou wilt wander into the samsara. O nobly born, if one recognize not one's own thought forms, However, learned one may be in the scriptures, both sutras and tantras, although practicing religion for a kalpa, one obtaineth not Buddhahood. If one recognize one's own thought forms by one important art and by one world, Buddhahood is obtained. If one's thought forms be not recognized as soon as one dies, the shapes of Dharma Raja, the Lord of Death, will shine forth on the Chunyad Bardo, the largest of the bodies of Dharma Raja, the Lord of Death, equaling the heavens in vastness. The Im intermediate Mount Meru, the smallest 18 times one's own body will come filling the world systems. They will come having their upper teeth biting the nether lip, their eyes glassy, their hair tied up on the top of the head, big bellied, narrow waisted, holding a karmic record board in the hand. Footnote 57. A board inscribed with karmic records of the life of the deceased. Giving utterance from their mouth to sounds of strike, slay, licking human brain, drinking blood, tearing heads from corpses, tearing out the hearts. Thus will they come, filling the worlds. O nobly born, when such thought forms emanate, be thou not afraid, nor terrified. The body which now thou possessest, being a mental body of karmic propensities, though slain and chopped to bits, cannot die. Because thy body is, in reality, one of voidness, thou needest not 
fear. The bodies of the Lord of Death, too, are emanations from the radiances of thine own intellect. They are not constituted of matter. Voidness cannot injure voidness. Beyond the emanations of thine own intellect faculties. Externally, the peaceful and the wrathful ones, the blood drinking ones, the various headed ones, the rainbow lights, the terrifying forms of the Lord of Death exist not in reality. Of this there is no doubt. Thus, knowing this, all the fear and terror is self dissipated and merging in the state of at one Buddhahood is obtained. If thou recognizest in that manner, exerting thy faith and affection towards the tutelary deities and believing that they have come to receive thee amidst the ambuscades of the bardo, think, I take refuge in them and remember the precious trinity exerting towards them, the trinity fondness and faith. Whosoever thine own tutelary deity may be, recollect now and calling him by name, pray thus. Alas, wandering am I in the bardo, run to my rescue, uphold me, by thy grace, O precious tutelary, calling upon the name of thine own Guru, pray thus, alas, wandering am I in the bardo, rescue me, or let not thy grace forsake me. Have faith in the blood-drinking deities too, and offer up this prayer, alas, when I am wandering in the samsara through force of overpowering illusions on the light path of the abandonment of fright, fear and awe, may the bands of the Bhagavans, the peaceful and wrathful ones, lead me. May the bands of the wrathful goddess rich in space be my rear guard and save me from the fearful ambuscades of the bardo, and place me in the state of the perfectly enlightened Buddhas. When wandering alone, separated from dear friends, when the void forms of one's own thoughts are shining here, may the Buddhas exerting the force of their grace cause not to come the fear, awe, and terror in the bardo. When the five bright wisdom lights are shining here, may recognition come without dread and without awe. When the divine bodies of the peaceful and the wrathful are shining here, may the assurance of fearlessness be obtained and the bardo be recognized. When by the power of evil karma, misery is being tasted, may the tutelary deities dissipate the misery. When the natural sound of reality is reverberating like a thousand thunders, may they be transmuted into the sounds of the six syllables. Footnote 58. The mantra of Chenrazi, the patron god of Tibet, its repetition in the human world and on the bardo plane is credited with terminating the cycle of rebirth, thus allowing entry into nirvana. When unprotected, karma having to be followed here, I beseech 
the gracious, compassionate one, Chen Razi, footnote 59, to protect me. When suffering miseries of karmic propensities here, may the blissfulness of the clear light dawn, may the five elements not rise up as enemies. Footnote 60. Earth, air, water, fire, ether. But may I behold the realms of the five orders of the enlightened ones.